Sadhguru is an Indian yogi who runs the Isha Foundation, a non-profit organization dedicated to cultivating human potential. He went from defying his parents' wishes by refusing to pursue a postgraduate degree and going into business instead to having a spiritual experience when he was 25, traveling on his motorcycle teaching yoga and becoming a best-selling author and highly paid speaker. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life, like nine to the nine. For my top 10, top 10, top 10, nine to the nine. This one's for my top 10. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Sadhguru, and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, take charge of your life. Fundamentally, if people understand that the source of human experience is within you, joy or misery, agony or ecstasy, pleasure or pain, everything comes from within you. If you understand this much, if I understand, suppose right now I think I'm miserable because of you, mm. there's no solution for my life, isn't it? Because all you have to do is walk in front of my home, I will become miserable. <laughs> so simple it is, you don't have to kill me, mm. you just have to walk around in front of me, I will die within myself every day. If I understand the source of my joy and misery are within me, then you know what's the obvious choice? Joy. It's obvious choice, isn't it? Mm. So this one fundamental thing has to get across to all the human beings on this planet. Your experience is entirely determined by you. This is what the word karma means, unfortunately. Mm. It's become something else here. Karma means action. That means, when we say, your life is your karma, we are saying your life is entirely your making, mm -hmm. hundred percent. What happens in the world, there are many, many forces involved. What happens within me, it's one hundred percent me, hundred percent, isn't it? Yes. If you don't take charge of this, then you're an accidental life. When you're an accidental life, anxiety is very natural. Natural, isn't it? Mm. Suppose you're driving accidentally, that is, you don't know what's happening and you're simply somehow going, anxiety is natural or no? Yes. Any accidental moment creates anxiety. So this is why consciousness means this, that you have taken charge of the instruments of life, which on most fundamental level, is our physiological and psychological space. You've taken charge of this. Mm. Now your health, your happiness, your joy, your ecstasy, your misery, everything is in your hands. You exercise them as you want. Rule number two, experience life. People keep asking me, coming to me and uh, asking me, Sadhguru, please bless us, nothing should happen to us. I say, hey, what kind of blessing is this? My blessing is let everything happen to you. <laughs> Everything that's life must happen to you. Have you come here to avoid life or have you come here to experience life? Please, you must make a decision right now. Have you come here to avoid life or to experience life? Experience life. All the different dimensions of what this life holds must happen to you, isn't it so? If you come to avoid life, there's an ocean right here. You can jump into the ocean. See, if you want to avoid life, you must die. It's a more efficient way of doing things, isn't it? You're alive and you try to avoid life, it'll become miserable. If you feel insecure, that's what you will do. You will try to avoid life. When you're alive and try to avoid life, it'll cause immense misery. When you're alive, you live. When you die, you die. Don't get up from the dead. Rule number three, reduce your movement by fifty percent. See, there is uh, scientific evidence to show at least twenty percent of your energy right now, as you sit here in a restful state, is being consumed by your brain. 
if you bring this down, that your brain is not unnecessarily fluctuating and, you know, hopping mad all the time, if it learns to still be still and do only what's needed, an enormous sense of personal power will develop. You can't do this with your mind right now, if you try to stop it, it'll hop even more crazy. At least do it with your body. Your words and your physical movements, reduce it by fifty percent. If you want to look at this, look at this, if you want to look at that, look at that, don't do this, this, this. With your body and your utterances, if you do this, slowly it will also start manifesting in your mind, it will not do unnecessary things. When you don't know unnecessary things, the energy that you have slowly transforms itself into potential power. Rule number four, make up your mind. Do you have practices to keep yourself so open and so joyful? Life. That's it. <laughs> what else? <laughs> Life is an openness. Death is closing, isn't it? Mm. Death is a closure. Life is a possibility. If you're just alive, everything is open. Tell me, can you be alive? Suppose you don't like me. So you don't want to inhale what I exhale. Stop breathing and exist for some time, let me see. Possible? Yes. Without breathing? For a little while. How is little… how much is little for you? To hold my breath? Yeah. I don't know, thirty seconds? Ten seconds? Ten minutes? Definitely not ten minutes. So I'm saying, if you don't like me, your dislike will not go away in thirty seconds, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Suppose I hate you, I don't want to breathe, inhale what you exhale. Mm. I will die within myself, isn't it? Yes. This all people are doing to themselves. I like this guy, I don't like that guy, this is uh, somebody I love, that's somebody I hate, this is belongs to me, this doesn't belong to me. They're just killing themselves step by step. They are planning to die in installments. Mm. If you want to live, here you are. Mm. You must make up your mind whether you want to live or you want to die. You want to know the certainty of death in life. This is called belief, this is called belonging, this is called identification. Because you are trying to find the certainty of death in the seamless process of life. Also, if you want to learn to have more self-love, check out my 254 series, it's free. The link to join is in the description below. The quality of your life is essentially determined by how you carry this one. Yes or no? Rule number five, ask yourself, who am I? This happened at the Cincinnati airport in Ohio, United States. People had lined up to check in at the air airline ticket booth. One man just skipped the line and came straight in the front and thrust his ticket. The lady at the counter, she said, sir, there is a line. He said, no, no, I'm in a hurry. She said, everybody's in a hurry, you're on the same plane. <laughs> Please stand in the line. Then he said, do you know who I am? She looked at him, promptly picked up the microphone and said, there is a man here who does not know who he is, can somebody help him? <laughs> so, who am I is not a question that you ask somebody, it's a question that you ask yourself. Make it more and more <laughs> profound. Rule number six, make a life, not a living. Something will get you money, something will get you comfort, that's not the point. What you choose to do, will it give you a life? When I say give it, give you a life, are you just trying to make a living? Or are you trying to make a life out of this? This is important. Making a living is not an issue. A worm, an insect, a bird, an animal, all of them are making their life, making a living, isn't it so? They're even making a life out of it, but definitely they're making a living. So making a living with such a big brain is not an issue. Earning your food is not an issue, making a living is not an issue. Only problem is you want to live like somebody else, that's an endless problem. I want to live is not a problem. I want to live like you, this is a problem. So, it is important if you consider 
your life was a precious life. You must make sure you make a wonderful life out of this. Rule number seven, don't pursue enlightenment. Don't pursue enlightenment. You cannot pursue enlightenment. How can you pursue something that you do not know? If you pursue something, you will pursue only what you know. What is the point pursuing something that you already know? What is the point in running after something that you already know? So if you have to step into something that you do not know, the only thing is just to keep walking. Keep a steady direction and keep walking. Maybe it's a wrong direction, it doesn't matter. Just keep walking. After all, planet is round. <laughs> Inevitably, if you keep walking and keep straight walking, not round and round, if you just keep straight walking, you will inevitably get somewhere. Nobody can take it away from you. You know, if you have a dog at home, you would know this. If you just tickle him in the tail, he will go shh, chasing his own tail. Okay, a lot of people are doing that. Their own tail they're chasing. Even enlightenment is their own tail. <laughs> Nobody told you there is such a thing. But definitely you can see from one person to another person, one person seems to be a little better off simply the way they are. Not because of their money, not because of their wealth, not because of their qualifications. Simply the way they sit and stand, somebody seems to be better off than somebody else. Yes or no? So, there is room and scope for improvement. Relentlessly improve. Let's see where it gets you. But if you have fancy ideas of what is enlightenment, then you will chase that silly idea and that idea is never enlightenment because it's your idea. Rule number eight, have an indiscriminate attention. In your book, you talk about something I thought was so interesting, to set the faucet to a certain drip rate and do nothing but focus on the dripping of the faucet for like seven minutes or something. What's the idea the is to pay attention to something which has no relevance to you. See, people are have divided the universe, this is important, this is not important. This person is important for me, this person is not important for me. This is important for me, that's not important for me. You divided the universe, mm. you will never know anything this way. Indiscriminate focus, indiscriminate attention. I am not attending to you because you are somebody with a cobra in your heart, all right? It doesn't matter who I speak to, who I am with, I am the same way, indiscriminate. Only when your attention and involvement is indiscriminate does the universe open up to you. Mm. You have discriminated, naturally you close. You know, people come to me and say, Sadhguru, I want to walk the spiritual path. I say, okay, be here for three days, let's see what we can do. So, no Sadhguru, day after tomorrow, my uncle's daughter's <laughs> birthday, I have to go. Oh, you want to get enlightened? and day after tomorrow, uncle's daughter's birthday also, all right. We got one and a half days. You do one thing, you do this, this and this. I said, Sadhguru, but I don't like this. All right, I'll give them a small piece of paper and say, okay, write down things that you like, we'll do only do, do that. You be, won't believe it, in this entire universe, most people like only three or four things. Wow. When <laughs> You are so constipated in your head that you lack only three or four people or three or four things in your life. How do you want to open up to the existence? Mm. Because life is happening because of its openness. This is a fundamental difference between death and life is, people are thinking it's just breath, all right, on one level. That is also openness, whether you allow this to happen or you don't allow it to happen whether you did it consciously or unconsciously, but it's happening, isn't it? Openness is on every subatomic particle, is in communication with everything. That's why this is going on. Breath is happening, so much is happening in connection with everything. It is only in openness you're alive. 
As you close doors, you are dying in installments. Dying in installments is torture. See, life is fantastic if you're alive and fully alive. If you're dead, it's good, at least the neighbors may think so. <laughs> this may sound very not so compassionate, but I'm saying everybody dies, you and me will die, all right? If you're dead, it's the game is over. But if you're half dead, oh, this is endless torture to yourself. When you are being tortured, of course, you'll share it with everybody else. Rule number nine, accept your mortality. If you come to terms with your mortality, security, insecurity, all these things will go. You are living on a daily basis as if you are forever. The fundamental awareness that this is mortal, this is here only for a limited amount of time, if this was a regular… you know, a normal conscious thing for you, you would put your life to best use for sure. And if you come to terms with that one thing, there would be no insecurity because there's nothing to gain, nothing to lose in this life. You came with nothing, whatever the hell is happening, you're on the profit side. Yes or no? Huh? Isn't it so? Did you come with investment? No. You come with nothing, so whatever the hell is happening, you're always on the profit side, isn't it? And anyway, they don't allow you to take a container <laughs> in the end. So all you have is how profound, intense and beautiful is your experience of life. So don't make too much fuss about it. You're acting as if you're going to lose something. No, there's nothing to lose, nothing to gain because you come and you go. You may think, oh, my life, my life. No, it's your… your life on this planet is like a pop-up. On the computer screen, you've seen these pop-ups? You just pop up and pop out. In the meantime, will you rise and shine is the only question, all right? So if anyway you shine, sometimes you may be seen by people, sometimes you may not be seen by people. The important is you… Sh you are shining within yourself and that's all that matters. If people have eyes, they will see it. If they have no eyes, they won't see it, that's their problem. But you are living an intense and profound life, that's all that matters here. If you understand this and if you bring this into your life, insecurity will not happen because security can happen only in death. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is be loyal to your wonderfulness. You may be wonderful, but you are not loyal to your wonderfulness. You are joyful, you are sometimes blissful, you are even loving but not loyal to these qualities. <laughs> a beautiful flower throws out fragrance. The flower is very loyal. No matter if you pluck it also, it's still fragrant. If the cow eats it also, it's fragrant. If the bee messes around also, it's fragrant. It never got angry and turned into a skunk ever. But you're not like that, you are wonderful like this. If somebody pokes you, you will become a skunk. You're not loyal to your wonderfulness. Now I have a special bonus clip from Sadhguru on how to make your wakefulness restful that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know how can you be more loyal to your wonderfulness? What will you do today? Let me know, put it down in the comments below. And if you made it this far in the video and you are still here watching Believe Nation, we don't just watch videos, we commit to taking action. If that's you or you're gonna do something after watching this video, give me a hashtag Believe down in the comments below and let me know where you're from as well so I can celebrate you. Right now people… generally people's understanding is rest means sleep. Wakefulness means something is happening. No, you have to make your wakefulness also restful. It is just like if you… Uh, if you have an automobile who is running at a very high RPM all the time, it'll naturally wear itself out. So it's important that you run cool. So if you are run at, running at a easy pace, your efficiency will go up, your ability to do things will go up, 
your competence will go up in everything. Above all, the number of hours that you sleep will go down dramatically. If you want another amazing video highlighting excellence in the Indian community, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.